Hi, Gary. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Corey. How are you doing? I am fantastic. Thanks for coming into my little makeshift studio. Of my room pleasure, here. man. You know I love it here. <laughs> Well, um, we've been gaming for a long time, a and long time. it's like everybody I interview is like, "Oh, you're an old, old friend of mine. You, you're actually on my Batman video. Go, go check yes. out my uh, Batman roleplay game yes. session. I'll put the link in the description below." Mm -hmm. But you're not here to talk about that. No, I mean I can, but because <laughs> that, that was because that was that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but but yeah, we 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 can skip that for now. And um, tell tell me. Your favorite story from an old game, uh, your favorite character oh. or favorite instance or plot. That's, I, I, I would say that's hard because there's so many, but you know, it's, 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 I'm on your show. And so I'm, I'm sticking to people that we both know. And uh, the one that jumps out at me was uh, a game of OmniQuest we were playing. And of course, for people that don't know OmniQuest, um, it it's it was it's actually a, a a game that was created by my older brother Mike for our original company, which was Tiger Volant, and later we folded that into Black Rabbit Games, which is the company, of course, that my you and my brother and I are, are yeah. putting together. But uh, so OmniQuest was a game that took a while in the making, and you know just to give a little background on OmniQuest, it actually started as we used to play Traveler, and we felt the rules were very limiting, so we wrote our own rules, and in the course of about eight years it ended up a different game entirely and that's when we came up with omniquest it became like a one game fits all kind of like gurps it, or we used to call it what gurps wanted to be when it grew up yeah that's what we used to say about it and so um and we could do anything with it and so this one particular night we did a fantasy we did a fantasy game and everybody already had fantasy characters and so i'm running this game and it, it's it's going extremely well we're having a good time and uh, LJ, of course, is playing his signature werewolf, which we all know LJ loves to play. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I had, this was a module. The game was a module I had written originally for Dungeons and Dragons, and I adapted it for OmniQuest. And so um, they are going to recover some artifact for some necromancer. Of course, you're almost, almost stock D&D uh, &D scenario. And... Um, uh, I had written some nasty surprises in there for them. And so they managed to overcome the first few obstacles and reach the necromancer's mansion, okay, his castle. And so, you know, and we have this, this stereotypical moment outside with the lightning flashing, and in they go. And so one of the things I had written into this, uh, this module was this one room that if they entered the room, and there's all kinds of rooms in this place, so anything could happen. And I wrote some pretty crazy stuff. And so there was this one room that if they opened the door, there were these three female werewolves. And now when you initially opened the door, they were in human form and it looked like you were in a, bou a boudoir or a harem. And, of course, and, the, and the girls were all in the... the Where there was in uh, the English speaking language, that's harem. A harem, <laughs> right. Okay. And so it's, it's, it were three very good looking women in very little clothing in this room, yes. you know, to make it simple. And it's, uh, it's obvious trap. Obvious it's an obvious, trap. See, obvious trap. A good looking woman, scantily dressed, in the middle of a dungeon, and she wants you. There's it's something. It's, a, it's trap. a trap, right? But but you know, sometimes players can't help themselves, right? And so um, I had that. That was one of the rooms. So here's they're exploring and they're looking for this room with the artifact. And and, and of course, if if you speak nerd you know it's got to be in the room with the necromancer the, the, the artifact is going to be in the most dangerous room mm -hmm. so i don't know why anybody's looking inside rooms the whole point is find the necromancer find the artifact but so they're going through this this um this mansion and lj you know L, and you you know lj could be really he could really be good for games because you know he will do things <laughs> That are so out of the ordinary, it will make the game. So what is LJ? What is he like playing? What he so doing? he's playing this. Um, he's playing basically a bar a barbarian type character, his stock werewolf. Okay, and so LJ opens the door to this room. Now remember, he's a werewolf. He's a male werewolf. He opens the door to this room, and there are three good looking women that are werewolves. He smells them. They smell him. And the room ain't a trap anymore. 
suffice suffice it to say, LJ LJ kept the party from danger <laughs> at miss, at his pleasure. <laughs> at his pleasure. So did, did he miss out on the battle with he, the necromancer. He missed out on the battle with the necromancer. <laughs> he had his own battle to win. <laughs> and so he he left that that game a proud papa in game. <laughs> and as a as a GM, you you can't write that. You can't write that stuff, you know. Um, and so it made it made the game. People were literally on the floor, and they're like, "Well, that's one room you don't have to worry about walking into and getting jumped because you know LJ is handling it." And so you know, in, in, in as far as the, the others were concerned, he took one for the team, man. He just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he was proud to do it. And so it made it made for a great game. I mean, by the time we were done, everybody's got these big smiles on their face because how often is something like that going to happen? But but the funny thing is some. Something like that seemed to happen almost every time we got together. So <laughs> that was just that was just one more story, <laughs> you know, just added to the mystique. But um, uh, that was a fun game to GM. It was a fun game to watch the players handle because it was uh, it was out of the ordinary. It was you know, it, it, like most gaming groups would have been your party goes in the room, half of them die killing the werewolves. Mm-hmm. Ours was our female, you know, our, our male werewolf member handles it. You know, that's how it went for us. And so uh, it's it's almost like that was our stock response to a situation like that, the out of the ordinary. So it was a lot of fun. Um, man, I can I can think of others. Isn't isn't that always I think that's mainly always the way though. You want a good game where the players think outside the box and are keeping a game master, a good game master that is on their toes. Yes. And always uh, coming up with new ideas and new ways to push the rules yes. of a game to its limits. I, I think what it can do. I think, um, well, situations that make you, that take you outside the rules are the best ones. Yes. Yeah. I think exactly. because then there's no rule to cover that a GM has to think on his feet and, and the players can contribute to that. And that's one reason I liked, I liked our gaming group because that wasn't an unusual thing with us. That happened a lot. Well, especially if you make your own game system, especially yes. always adding to that and trying to make the rules more robust. But at the yes. same time that I think that can hurt a new game system in that yes. you can, overcomplicate things right with those new rules right. well i think that's why we became game designers because i think we were we weren't satisfied with a lot that was out there because we created a lot of those situations and they it, it's like they didn't foresee that coming and so we're asking how much did they test this thing how far did they push the limits who who played it before it, it went on the shelf and and in a situation like that when you know, and maybe you're smelling your own, you know, the smell of your own underarms, and you're going, "I can write better than that," or, or well, for whatever reason, I just don't like the genre. Let me create my own. Um, we became game designers because of that, and and I, I personally think, you know, at the risk of sounding cocky, our stuff is better for that reason. I do, and you know, I'd rather I'd rather play Cosmic Forge or OmniQuest. Oh, thanks or, for the shout out. You're welcome. I had to throw a shout out for my boy, guys. And so, or, or. Link in the description. Or Moratori. Moratori. I'd rather play those than, than, than D&D. As much as I love D&D, don't get me wrong, D&D got me started. And I, as much as I love it, I'd rather play a game of, of, uh, of uh, Cosmic Forge because we did that. And we've pushed that edge and we've been there. I think you have to have those situations like your LJs uh, doing what they're doing in order to, to create uh, rules or game system that, that captures your imagination and lets situations like that become part of your adventure. And, and, you know, the fact that we can sit back and talk about stories like that, I'll be honest. And again, I'm not trying to sound arrogant, but I don't think a lot of game groups have the experiences that we do because of that. I think it's very stock a lot of times. Here are the rules. My barbarian kills everything. I killed 100 lizard men. Yay. Okay. Well, the gauntlet's been tossed, guys. Yeah. I, Comment. Well, put, f- forgive put me. Put your <laughs> awesome game stories in the comments below and show this guy <laughs> that he is wrong. No, 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 no hate. No hate. Gary, I'm not hating. Gary, man, thank you. Thank you for doing this for me. It's been... 
Awesome. You know, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. And yes, I did toss a gauntlet and it's not, it's not hating. It's we're, we're gamers. We love gaming and we challenge you guys, take your game to another level. Don't make it stock, man. Have, have games that you talk about years later. 